What's up, YouTubers? If you're new to this channel, my name is Omar Garza. I am the cinematographer at Lunasoul Studios, where we cover things like production, visual storytelling, and pst, gear. So this week I was editing, and when I say editing, I mean I was mostly watching YouTube videos when I came across a video by someone named Potato Jet. Now, I actually don't remember what the video was about, but I will put a card for it somewhere here uh, for you to go check it out. Um, I'm sure it was really informational and great, I just that did not stick with me, but what did stick with me was in the comments, there was somebody that said Blackmagic had released a plugin of their own to natively edit be raw in Premiere Pro. Now I use Premiere Pro exclusively, not because it's like the best software ever or anything like that. I'm sure there's other ones that are just as good, if not better. Um, but I've been using it for so long, I feel really comfortable with it. And whatever I feel comfortable with is kind of just what I'm gonna use at this point. Basically, when I read this comment, I had a flashback. Ooh, edit Blackmagic raw natively? Hmm, sounds pretty good. Oh. Only $29? Wow. And B Raw Studio does exactly what you think it would allow you to do. It's a plugin that allows you to edit your B Raw files, your raw files from the Blackmagic 4K or 6K in Premiere Pro natively. I have to pay extra if I want to use Media Encoder? No big deal. Another $29. Let's make it $58. Yes. So when I read that comment, I was thinking, dang, two licenses that I just bought are now effectively useless. Uh, but I thought they're different programs, they're different plugins. They're not the same, so maybe one's better than the other. Let's find out. Now, I originally started with B Raw Studio about four weeks ago, and besides the obvious negative of the $29 versus free, from DaVinci Resolve, or I'm sorry, or Blackmagic Design, um, there are some things that you need to know about. With B-Raw Studio, you do not get icons. Or the icons that you get are basically these blank looking sheets with the corners peeled down. Maybe they peeled them down because they're angry they couldn't see anything. So you basically have to blind guess at which file you need when you transfer it over. Then you can find out hopefully you got the right one. <laughs> or you could just do them all and edit all of them, uh, manage all your media in this box over here in the lower left corner of Premiere Pro, which isn't the worst. That's fine. Scrubbing through, through footage with B-Raw Studio is actually not bad at all. It's a dream. You could drag, drop things into the timeline, and then when you click on the clip, under effect controls, you will see the name of the clip and then master of that same clip. Now, if you click in that master section of the clip, that there is a section that says decode using camera metadata. Now you can do that if you want to and leave it the exact same. However, if you really want to unlock that raw potential, what you're going to do is go to that camera metadata, click on it and change the settings to clip. Now you have access to everything that you should when you're shooting raw. So you can immediately change your clip to rec 709 or rec 2020. If you're like some kind of awesome editor or for with Rec 2020, I never have any luck, and so 709 is great for me. But I also really like using Blackmagic Design's color space uh, as well. Now you can edit the ISO here, uh, make adjustments. The only catch really is that it's going to edit the entire clip. The ISO for the entire clip is going to be affected, so even if you cut it up and move it into different spaces, it's not really gonna matter because even though this clip is cut up into multiple pieces, placed all along the timeline, it's going to be affected all the way across the board. The only way to avoid this is if you actually get that clip again in an outside file, drop it or import it into your project as a separate file. So if there are two different files in your project, you can edit them separately. Otherwise, they're interconnected and there's just nothing you can do about it. Now, highlight recovery is something I just do not understand right now. Um, maybe I heard it works really, really well in DaVinci Resolve, but when I click highlight recovery here, I only see a slight change to the image, nothing noticeable, nothing to write home about. Okay, um, white balance, you can obviously adjust that after the fact, which is a really cool thing about shooting raw. 
You can do it manually by switching the numbers or just the presets that come on the Blackmagic camera. Now, gamma gets a little bit more interesting. You can change that to your Rec. 709, which I think produces just like a beautiful image straight out of camera. Um, but what I really like to do is check out the gamma controls. Now, gamma controls, you can affect saturation, contrast, midpoint, highlight roll off, shadow detail, white level. And you can do this all while you're adjusting the raw file, basically. Now, one thing that I did notice was the highlight, highlight roll off um, when using BRAW Studio does not seem to affect the image as much as I thought it was going to. Okay, so we're gonna jump over to the OG, original, Blackmagic Design plugin that I found on, that you can find easily on their webpage. Scrolling down right here to new Blackmagic RAW 1.5 update. Download now. <laughs> That's what you're gonna wanna do. Click the download now. It's going to bring you to this other page here and then you're going to click Windows or Mac OS depending on, you know, what system you're using. And then register download. You do not have to <laughs> you do not have to click this bar even though I've clicked on it multiple times in the past and it should automatically download for you. Once you have it installed, one of the cool things you're going to notice right away is that you actually get little icons that preview the videos that are actually on there. So that's really cool. You can just look at the files within the folders and know, hey, <laughs> this is the clip that I want, um, which is really cool. Good on you. Thank you, Blackmagic Design. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for clicking files and dragging them over. However, it's not without its faults. As you can see from this uh, view right here, not all of them were kind of de-squeezed. Some of them still looked like they're squeezed. Not that I shot these in anamorphic or anything. I shot these regular 16 by nine, but some of them look like they're just compressed into little Instagram-like boxes that just everyone looks way too skinny in. That is the first glitch that I noticed when using Blackmagic's plugin. So that is the first glitch that I noticed when using Blackmagic Design's plugin. The second one, was when I tried to edit the clip. So I got the clip, dropped in the timeline, and you can see here, as soon as I tried to click on the master or the raw editing portion of it, I got a non -res no response from Premiere Pro. It just stopped responding. I did wait, I did try to make this work. However, it just went on for, I don't know, 15 minutes or 10 minutes. I don't know how long I waited. Uh, I waited, let me look at this timeline, I waited six minutes. So after six minutes I decided this thing doesn't seem like it's using any CPU, so who knows if it's ever going to ride itself. This ship has steered in the wrong direction and we're going to go ahead and kill this Titanic. Alright, so I just, I just end, hit end task and then went ahead and started up Premiere Pro again. Let's try it again, maybe third time's a charm. So third time was a charm and it worked out pretty well. Everything was going great. I tried to see if I could have multiple <coughs> exposures or ISOs throughout the clips. And once again, I ran into the same issue where when you edit one clip in the raw file from the source file master, then it's going to affect all of the corresponding clips. No matter how much you cut it up and spread it out, they're all going to be affected if you adjust ISO um, exposure or anything you do within the master section or the master section of the effect controls. Okay, I tested out highlight recovery to see if it would do anything different here in the Blackmagic version, uh, which it seemed to not do anything different. It seemed to be the exact same, in fact. Um, and I was really surprised that for the most part, everything seemed to be exactly the same. As soon as I clicked to change um, from your standard setting, your decode using clip, I got a lot, if not all of the same controls. I don't think any of them were different. I have clip, white balance, color space, gamma, ISO, just like the other one, and your gamma controls are at the absolute bottom. The third and final issue that I ran into when I was using the Blackmagic Designs plugin was suddenly the ISO would just drop. But when I checked the master file, the ISO was exactly the same. So I checked it, ISO stayed the same. However, when I scrolled through the clip, the exposure just took a dump. 
and I don't know why it was doing that. I didn't have any adjustment layers on the top of it. I hadn't made any timed controls to make that happen. However, it was just another, a third bug in the system making me feel like maybe this isn't a system I can completely rely on. So that's my breakdown of the two systems that you can currently use to edit these raw files natively uh, in Premiere Pro. And honestly, right now, if I was to pick up a program, even though Blackmagic Designs is free, if you're a working professional, I would pay the $29 and get the B Raw Studio from Autochroma. I've had zero problems using it. It has worked for me every single time, it's very reliable, and when it comes to getting a project done on time or there's a deadline you're shooting for, it's definitely something that you're not going to want to be held back uh, because of some weird glitch where your exposure just drops out or maybe it's making Resolve or it's making Premiere freeze or whatever the case is. There's, I've experienced zero glitches and I guess I'm content with the $58 that I spent on these licenses. Um, all that being said, hopefully this video was useful to you. If you liked this type of information and you're interested in seeing more, then stick around, subscribe, like, comment. I'd love to hear about your experience with DaVinci Resolve's plugin, as well as Autochroma if you ended up picking up that one. We'll see you next week.